Portland State with eight straight points up by two. Bull steps back, banks it in. Bull nails it, that's 11 straight points. Now the Warriors are up five. What a turnaround here in the first quarter. They weren't gonna beat themselves, and so it puts a, a tremendous amount of stress on you to score and keep up with them, what they do offensively. You know, they're a solid team, that's a championship team that's been there, I think six out of eight years, and you can see the consistency on that side, what they did with us. Golden State looking to push at every opportunity, thread the needle, and Wiggins banks it in. After a hot start by Boston, Golden State dominating since two and a half left in the first. Scored the last 11 of the first, the first five here of the second. Poole pushes, finds Wiggins, Wiggins throws it down. And the Celtics need another timeout. Golden State scored 21 in a row. It's hard when you spot a team, you know, that many points. Uh, we started out well, and then, you know, it, it got away from us. Offensive rebounds hurt us, and it's hard, you know, when you have the momentum like that. The 21-0 run. Going back to the first, that's the longest in an NBA Finals in the past 50 years. Welcome to NBA Finals Film Room, presented by YouTube TV. I'm Stephanie Reddy, alongside the coaches, Coach Sam Mitchell, Coach Stan Van Gundy. We will help you guys understand what happened in Game <laughs> 6. It is now over. The Warriors have been crowned champion so gentlemen we saw a historic run it was just referenced in that video we saw let's take a look at some stats from game six obviously the score right there at the top field goals first line the three-point shooting that was a big part of the story golden state shot 46 of them making 19 and of course the celtics with 22 turnovers did not help them at all you see the bench scoring 21 to 5 golden state outscored the Boston Celtics. Now, when you talk about that 21 to zero run, it was historic. We'd never seen that happen in the NBA Finals before. Stan, what went into that? Well, Golden State's defense, outstanding. Their offensive rebounding was dominant, and we saw 21 second chance points for the game, a lot of them in that stretch, and then the ball movement um, of Golden State. They were just outstanding. I mean, here it is right here. It, it, it's sort of started right in this thing, and it, it seems like a simple one. Robert Williams contests, doesn't do anything. No one touches Gary Payton. He just walks in. <laughs> Offensive rebound, lays it in. So now you're, you're, you know, up four if you're Boston. Then Draymond Green gets in the act. His first made three <laughs> of the series. Of course you help, and Grant Williams doesn't rotate down. But again, tough drive. Grant Williams, great defense on Wiggins. Draymond Green runs in from the corner, tips the ball back out. Poole knocks in a three. And then the defense, again, we have saw it all series long. Jalen Brown dribbles into traffic, gets stripped. It ignites a fast break. Wiggins ends up in the dunk. So the Golden State defense and their rebounding in that stretch was just outstanding. Well, Coach, the thing that was amazing to me with rebounding, everybody think it's got to be a big guy controlling the paint. Long shots turn into long rebounds. And Boston did a terrible job on those long shots of boxing out and chasing down the ball. And Golden State and Draymond Green just lived off that. And you know the most dangerous time for a guy to get a wide open three is on an offensive rebound. It just breaks your back. And Golden State just crushed him doing that. Absolutely. I mean, four threes off second chance opportunities for Golden State last night. Four made threes. Right. I mean, it's too much to overcome. It's Especially when story. you turn it over 20 right. times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a problem in itself. Uh, Coach Mitchell. You talk about all the weapons that the Warriors have, and we talked about their depth. Jordan Poole showed up when it mattered. He scored 15 points off the bench. Yeah, you think about the first three games, Steve Kerr was trying to figure out how to get Jordan Poole and Bob because Boston was doing a fantastic job of attacking him when he came in on the defensive end. But I tell you what, when he got free and Steve Kerr figured out how to make the adjustment for Poole and Curry because Coach, once they freed them up and they didn't have to worry about their defense, this young man, he took advantage of every crack in the Boston defense. And every time he got an opportunity to knock down a shot, whether it was an open shot or a tough shot, he nailed it. And it was just too much. And give Steve Kerr credit. As this series went on, Emi Adoka lost confidence 
and his bench. And as the series went on for Golden State, Steve Kerr garnered more and more confidence because he went deeper into his bench. And you can see at the end, those five players, six players for the Celtics just kind of ran out of gas and fizzled. And Golden State just kept getting stronger because they went deeper into their bench. Yeah, I mean, not only was Poole great, but Gary Payton, the second, oh. was tremendous in the last three games yeah. there. Um, you're right. They, their bench just totally dominated uh, Boston's bench last night. Only five points off the bench for the Celtics. I mean, you would never think you'd hear that, right, in an NBA Finals game, a deciding game at that five points from your bench. You would know that that's not going to be a good <laughs> night for not you. Not a winning formula. Right. Well, no, and especially because Grant Williams had had a good playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Derek White had had a good playoffs and started the Finals series. Yep playing extremely well, and then just disappeared on the offensive end. That's why we love this game, right? You don't yep. know what's going to happen any given night. So, Coach Mitchell, we talked about the good part of the game, which was the Golden State offense. What about the Boston Celtics and their shot selection? Well, it's not that they took bad shots. It's just when they played in a crowd, they turned the ball over, but they weren't efficient offensively. Check this out right here. This is a great play. One-on-one -on -one Tatum and, and uh, Draymond Green. He just missed a layup. That was a good play, but he did take advantage of a live ball turnover. Here's another live ball. Stop it right there. Look at the lack of spacing. Jalen Brown should be sprinting to the corner. Pritchard should be flattening out. And then Robert Williams should be screaming, I'm the trailer. But watch this. Jalen Brown stays right there, so he brings more defense. Now, right there, Coach White should have been looking to drop that pass off to the corner for a three. He challenges over a 6'10", Kevon Looney. That's a bad play. Here again, this is good offense. Look at the play right here. Golden State screws this up. Watch Tatum on the backdoor cut. Everyone goes with him. White slips again. A great opportunity. He misses a bunny or an opportunity to kick it to Pritchett for a wide over three. And then you miss a layup and you come back and you give up a layup in transition. And last but not least, here's Boston again. Look at no spacing, coach. You got five guys in transition on the same side of the court. Okay, you think you got an advantage right here. All right, watch this. They don't switch because they want Wiggins to stay on Horford. Now, this is a tough contested shot. Great defense by Klay Thompson. Coach, that's a bad shot against a set defense. And if you look at the Boston Celtics, they tried to score in traffic too much. Mm -hmm. And when they had opportunities, Coach, in transition, they just couldn't convert. And when you miss a layup on one end and give a layup up on the other end, Coach, that's a four-point swing. And those type of things compounded on four threes off offensive rebounds, missed layups, and then the other team running out getting layups, it's just compounding bad on top of bad. Demoralizing, too. Yeah. And you saw it in the game. The Boston Celtics lost heart yeah. in that game. And those kind of plays take your heart mm -hmm. where you've got a chance to get an easy one. You don't convert. They get it at the other end. But you see Golden State's defense there, though, too. Give them credit. Yes. They did a great job contesting shots in the paint and at the basket without fouling. Yes. You know, they had put the Celtics on the line 31 times in the previous game, but they were outstanding of contesting without fouling last night. The Warriors have never gotten enough credit for their defense. We always talk about their offense, but when we saw in the deciding game, it was the defense that helped tell the story. Draymond Green in particular on both sides of the ball was very effective. By far his best game of the series. You know, he was more aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. He actually made some shots, which <laughs> yeah. helped. But his defense outstanding. A steal there, and then he's the guy who always pushes it on the break. You see his help coming there. He's there to show help. And then on the rebound, again, he's going to lead the break. And we know he's their quarterback on the offensive end. Hand off, reset the screen there for Curry. And then on this baseline out of bounds, this was a big one. He makes a jumper yes. with the shot clock running down <laughs> and tells the crowd <laughs> to quiet down. Coach, you know what I love? After the game, Draymond talked about in a decisive game six on the road, that's when your veteran's supposed to show up. Yeah. That's what I'm proud of. He showed up and showed out. And you say to Coach, his best game offensively and defensively, pass and facilitating by far. That's why we love the NBA Finals. 
The Golden State Warriors, as they put it, I believe it was Draymond Green who said this, it turned into the Warriors Invitational. <laughs> and we're expecting that that may be an open tournament for years to come. Yeah. But we're not finished. We still have more to talk about in game six. We'll be right back with more. You're watching Finals Film Room, brought to you by YouTube TV. Everything live TV should be. Try it free. Welcome back inside our NBA TV studios, a Steffertless performance. The 2022 NBA Finals featured this young man, Stephen Curry, and he did not disappoint. Earned himself a Finals MVP award as we show you those numbers. Seven assists and seven boards to go along with those 34 points. I'm Stephanie Reddy alongside Stan Van Gundy. You might wonder where Sam Mitchell is. Well, look, he's at the big board. I Coach just don't have not knees like Kenny. That's okay, though. <laughs> well, thank you. My thank legs you very are much. straight. I love that. Uh, Coach Mitchell, what you got for us? What do you want to talk about? Well, the best and the greatness of Steph Curry, him, him moving without the ball and you're knowing how to use his screens and offense. Watch this play right here. Look at Steph Curry in transition now. Look, he knows where everyone is, but he's attacking. Right, he gives the ball up to Gary Payne, but he doesn't stop moving. He comes right off for a left handoff, boom, knocks it down for a three. Here's Steph Curry again right here, moving without the basketball. He's setting the screen. The coach, you know, the guy that sets the good screens always gets the shot. But on an offensive rebound, this is when you're at the most dangerous. Andrew, Andrew Wiggins hands it off to him. Pump fakes Robert Williams. That's too easy of a shot for Steph Curry. Again, continuous moving. Here is Steph Curry again. Draymond Green has the ball. Now look at Steph. As soon as Marcus Smart turned to peak, he gives a burst. You peak. I'm going to punish you right here. He comes off Draymond Green for a handoff for another three. And this right here, Coach, this is just sick right here. Look at Steph in the trailer uh, position right here. Robert Williams and Al Horford. Y'all are not going to pay attention to me. You do realize I'm in range when I park my car in the parking lot. Right. Okay, or get off the bus. You can't guard that, Coach. And if he's moving like that and you lose sight of him, it's over. And when he's cooking like that, Coach, it was just a matter of time. And he was not going to have a repeat performance or over nine from the three like he did last game. No, and I think if you talk to defenders around the league, guards, because of his movement and his shooting combined, they'll tell you the hardest guy to guard <laughs> in the league. You know you're in for a long night. Nightmare. I mean, you better hydrate and sleep and do everything sleep. you possibly can. <laughs> you're not sleeping because right. you you're thinking about what you're going to be sleep. going What's through that? the next night. Well, he is lucky enough to have lots of other people around him that are capable of doing tons of things. Helps make his job a little bit easier. Coach Van Gundy, let's talk a little bit about Wiggins. Well, clearly the second best player in this series in my opinion, and the best two-way player yeah. in the series because he did a great job on the offensive end of the floor, and he also, as we see, great block there on Tatum. He made it tough on Tatum. He got out in transition, but he was doing this to Jason Tatum the entire series. Think about this. Jason Tatum, the first three rounds of the playoffs, shot 50% from two-point range in this series. 32 percent. Wow. Woof. Contesting every shot and then scoring at the other end and his two best playoff rebounding games ever were in this series yep. in games four and five. The only reason he didn't wasn't the finals MVP is because Steph Curry <laughs> was it. so yeah. good. Yes. <laughs> Coach Mitchell when you see numbers like that from a player who some people frankly had written off. Yeah. Right? They had categorized him as a bust, which I have always yeah. hated that word. What does that say to you when you see him now, as Coach Van Gundy pointed out, career numbers in the finals? I'm going to tell you this. His rookie year when he won rookie of the year, he averaged 17 points. His second year, he averaged 20. His third year, he averaged 23. And his first four years in the league, Coach, he missed one game. Mm. Eight, one game in four years. So you tell me how many first-round picks of, of, of former number one picks, first four years in the league, Played in every game but one. And we're going to question his love and passion for the game? Mm. Look at all these so-called guys that love the game that are never on the floor <laughs> more than 60 games a night. I dropped the mic on that. All right, then. I accept it. <laughs> Impressive. I mean, when you look at someone's resume, things are factual. And yep. so Andrew Wiggins has shown up. Robert Williams III also had a good habit of showing up. 
couple of block parties under his belt. We'll dive into that when we get back. You're watching Finals Film Room, brought to you by YouTube TV. Everything live TV should be. Try it free. One thing that he's always done throughout the season was uh, seen multiple different coverages and figured it out, and he did that throughout the first few series, and this one was a rough one. Uh, very consistent team that did some things to limit him and make others pay, and so um, from him, it's just continue to grow and understand that you're going to see this rest of your career, and, and this is just a start, but the growth that he showed as a playmaker this year and, and in certain areas, I think this is the next step for him, uh, figuring that out. Welcome back to NBA Finals Film Room. I'm Stephanie Reddy alongside Sam Mitchell and Stan Van Gundy. We've talked a lot about the Warriors so far. The Boston Celtics, they were there. Jason Tatum, a budding superstar. We saw him kill it, essentially, in the first three rounds. We're showing you this graphic because, yes, there is room for growth. You heard his head coach, Ime Yudoka, talking about that. His finals numbers dipped when you look at his points and his field goal percentage. And I'd like to draw your attention to that bottom line. 100 turnovers this postseason. It's the most all-time in a single season. He did play 24 games, averaging right around four turnovers per outing. We are not piling on. We are using this as an opportunity to talk about how he can get better as he continues to develop his game, Coach Mitchell. Yeah, look, I look at those numbers, and Coach, you would agree, Tatum is an outstanding player. I do believe at some point in this league, he will win an MVP. But he had a tough series, and, and it's two factors. One, he has to understand when you get to this point, Coach, this is not a random NBA game on a regular 82-game schedule. You can split double teams. You can attack guys. Teams are not prepared. When you get to this stage of the season, when you're playing in the finals against the second-best defensive team in the league, they're going to take away all those things. And I think two things, Coach, playing in a crowd, understanding when two people are guarding you to pass the ball, and then this is on the Celtics' front office. Find some players to put around the here and Brown that they trust and have confidence in it. Late in that game, you saw Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, they kept doing this to their teammates, whether they make or not. Jalen Brown and Tatum stopped passing the ball because they lost confidence in others around them. So I think if they can, he will learn from this. But the second thing is put some better players or pieces around him. That will help him also. Well, and especially to have a really true point guard, not taking anything away from Marcus Smart, who had a great, great year, but a true creator where those two guys can play off the ball yes. a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, that Don't you make, it, it makes it easier to right. guard a guy when he brings the ball up 94 feet at six foot nine or 10, who's not a natural point guard anyway, yeah. right? It just takes a lot out of those guys. And they both have to go to work this summer, though, on their game going to their left hand. Mm. As the series went on, the Warriors were more disciplined on keeping those guys to their left hand. They had trouble passing the ball going left, and they yeah. have both had trouble finishing going left. They're going to need some off-season work on that. And this is what they do, the superstars, the great players. They continue to build on their game and get better in the offseason. Now, Coach Van Gundy, I know one of your favorite players to watch on the defensive end all season long has been Robert Williams III. He may or may not have been 100%, but he was still impactful. Uh, very impactful. And, and look, he's the anchor of the best defense in the league. I, I know that Marcus Smart was the defensive player of the year. Look how far he comes on that <laughs> yeah. recovery. He is blown by, and he covers all that ground, Sam, and gets the block that leads to a fast break for Tatum, one of the few easy buckets that he got. Robert Williams turns it over. Now look where he is and look where Clay Thompson is. Look how far he comes on this one mm. to get the block. <laughs> wow. This guy doesn't just stand at the rim and block shots. He can cover ground. And then Steph Curry takes him to the rim and does a good job shielding himself. Still, he blocks it right out of there. This guy's going to be a star in years to come. He's obviously got to get healthy. He's still got improvements he can make on the offensive end of the floor, though he's a very good passer and finisher. That guy's a great guy to be able to build your defense around. Very impressive, fun to watch, and I'm glad you brought up the passing because there was one pass in particular that he completed last night off the dribble with the left hand, 
for the two points. I mean, oh, that's the cover's not bad in Boston. Tremendous. We're talking about Golden State, but Boston got a chance to have a little mini dynasty of their own now. Yes. All right. Well, we'll dive into that perhaps. Uh, you guys are not going anywhere, so you guys shouldn't go anywhere at home. We'll talk a little bit more about Game Six and this Golden State Warriors team. It's time for them to celebrate. What <clears throat> made this group really special was. Uh, besides the obvious with uh, with Steph, uh, was the defensive intensity and versatility, and for that, um, you know, Draymond is the guy to to point to, the leader of it all. But the additions of Wiggs, uh, Gary Payton, the return of Clay, uh, the emergence of Loon, uh, it, it all factored in, and uh, I've been really lucky to be part of a lot of these in my career uh, and I, I have yet to see a team that wasn't elite defensively uh, win a championship. Steve Kerr so classy giving everyone their due as he did a little mini roll call there. Taking a look at Golden Dynasty, what they've done since the 14-15 season. Oh, just won several championships. <laughs> Had an NBA record 73 wins in that 16 season. And this is what puts it all in perspective, guys. Had the worst record in the NBA in the 1920 season. And then Coach Mitchell, you come back like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Well, within that, they had some of their best players that was hurt come back. Yep. And then you look at Bob Myers in that front office, adding Andrew Wiggins, adding finding Gary Payton in the G League, adding a, a guy like Jordan Poole, his developing. And then you look at Kevon Looney, a guy that doesn't give up, put up big numbers, coach, but he does all the little things, not good, but great. And you factor all that in with Steve Curry and uh, Steph Curry, and you got a golden dynasty. You got a soup that tastes so good, Coach. I think it's going to be served for a long time. Well, and, and look, Steve Kerr, one of the things I don't think he gets enough credit for is he uses everybody on that roster. Yep. I mean, you know, like last night, we didn't see Bielitsa for the nope. first time. But Gary Payton missed games. Then he comes back in the rotation. Looney went to the bench. You know, he will move his pieces around and uses everybody. We didn't see Kuminga yeah. in this series, but he had big moments. Yeah. He started in the Memphis series. <laughs> yes. Like, he's going to use everybody, and that's why these players develop. Well, we will figure out where they rank all time in terms of dynasties because, as you all both mentioned, it's probably not over yet. No, it ain't. <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking around. For Stan and Sam, I'm Stephanie.